So good morning. Welcome to Flint United Methodist Church. It's October the 16th, 2022. We're going to start in the Cokesbury singing 233, uh, Love Lifted Me. I invite you to stand and we are going to sing. So I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Ever his praises sing. Love so mighty and so true merits my soul the songs. Faithful, loving service to to him be longs. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. completely saved. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me now for our call to worship our response is we experience god's grace and goodness here we go as we gather we remember god's faithfulness we experience god's grace and goodness in our pain we seek god's comfort we experience god's grace and goodness in our hunger we seek god's provision we experience god's grace god's so we're going to sing a couple that we don't have in our books one is where we've done plenty of times i sing praises to your name and then we're going to follow that with a song called My Lighthouse. Kate Knotts, a young man who attends in Normandy, went to summer camp, came back, said, this is one we need to sing. And so we're going to try it today, My Lighthouse. But we'll start with I Sing Praises to Your Name. Well, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. sing praises to your name oh lord praises to your name oh lord for your name is great greatly to be praised i give glory to your name oh lord glory to your name I give glory to your name, oh Lord, glory to your name, oh Lord, for your name is great, greatly to be praised. In my 
wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures won't work out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold, your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. tomorrow brings with each morning I'll rise and sing my God's love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh you are the peace in my troubled sea my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Safe to shore. For us, you are the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. Far before us, you are the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. Far before us, you are the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. My lighthouse, my darkness I will follow you oh my lighthouse my lighthouse I will trust the promise you will carry me safe to shore safe to shore safe to shore Please be seated. All right, we have uh, birthdays. Uh, we have one birthday on the list, and that's Nancy. Her birthday is on the 22nd. Um, any other birthdays to celebrate this week? To birthday was Wednesday. Oh, really? Emily's birthday was Wednesday, so happy birthday to Emily. That's the day before my birthday, Emily, so our birthdays are close. Any other birthdays we want to celebrate today? Well, let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Just by way of announcement, uh, our church uh, right now is in the discernment process to uh, think about disaffiliating from the denomination. I don't know of any scheduled meetings except for the church conference where uh, the vote will take place to make that decision. And that meeting is going to happen on November the 6th at 1.30 here, here at the church. Um, and then we have our, any other announcements we want to make or need to make? We have... Uh,
prayers that are on our list. Most of these have been on for a while. Angie uh, Duncan, Bill and Robbie Lyle, uh, Jim Waite, Bob Dietz, Jan and Tanya Archer, Letha and Bobby. Any others to lift up today? Let's, uh, let's bow our heads for prayer. Gracious God, as we come to this service, we anticipate your presence with us. We ask, Lord God, that you would prepare our hearts, that you would open our hearts and our eyes so that we may see you. We ask, God, for your Holy Spirit to come and touch us so that we can be the church that you want us to be. We pray, Lord God, for those who are living their lives right now without you, without Jesus Christ. And we, we just pray, Lord God, that we would be instrumental through our, through our witness, through the work that we do, so that people right now who don't know you may come to know you, may come to live in a relationship with Jesus Christ because of our church, because of us, and what we do for you. We ask all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we join in the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let's join together in our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. So our reading today comes from the book of Ephesians chapter 4, reading the first six verses. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand now and let's join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without Next is uh, 572 in the hymnal, 572, it is Pass It On. It only takes a spark to get a fire going, and soon all those around. That's how it is with God's love. 
Once you've experienced it, you spread his love to everyone. You want to pass it on. What a wondrous time in spring when all the trees are budding. The birds begin to sing. The flowers start their blooming. That's how it to see it's fresh like spring you want to pass it on remember we shout uh, praise God from the mountain I wish for you my friend this happiness that I have found you can depend on him I'll shout it from the mountaintop, praise God. I want the world to know, Lord of love has come to me. I want to pass it on. I'll shout it from the mountaintop, praise God. I want the world to know, the Lord of love has come to me. I want you pass it on. Please be seated. Please be seated. <laughs> let's uh, let's bow our, our heads for prayer. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So we've been working our way through the, uh, the Believe uh, book that we've been using. We're now on chapter 6. Chapter 6 of the book is uh, Church, or The Church. And so working that, there was a, there was a preacher's kid who... Uh, just over and over, heard all the words his, his father would use with Asian at the end. You know, incarnation, justification, sanctification. And so uh, he was not too sure, but he was asked in Sunday school about procrastination. And uh, the young man assured the Sunday school teacher he didn't exactly know what it meant, but the church believed in it <laughs> because of all these other words, you know, that they... <clears throat> that he was used to using. So, so as we've worked through the book so far, the first 10 chapters of this book talk about what we believe. And we, we've talked about how, how we believe in God, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. How we believe in a God that has a personal knowledge of us and knows each one of us intimately. And we believe in salvation. And our salvation comes through Jesus Christ, through grace, you know, by faith in Jesus Christ. We believe... Uh, last week, a uh, brother, uh, Pastor Jim Ryder was here and he preached for us and, and he looked at our identity in Jesus Christ and how all of us, because of Christ, have the chance to be a part of the family of God. We're heirs. We're heirs of God because of what God has done for us. And then today, today we're looking at the church. And, and, as, and as I think about today's uh, focus, one of the things that I just kept reminding myself over and over is that as we think about church, we, we need to realize or think about or remind ourselves that the church is people. People, people, people. You know, the, the church isn't our property. It's not our buildings where maybe we find a nice place to hide every Sunday morning. The church is people. And God sent Jesus Christ, and Christ died so that all the people of the earth may know God. And that's really where our chapter starts. The chapter starts looking, <clears throat> the chapter starts with the covenant that God had with Abram. And how, how we read there that, uh, I'm just going to back up because I'm, I'm, I'm way out of scene. 
So the key question of chapter 6 is how will God accomplish his plan? How will God accomplish his plan? And the idea, the key idea is I believe the church is God's primary way to accomplish God's purpose on earth. We are here so that God can accomplish what God wants to do. And then the key verse comes from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head. That is Christ. So when, when chapter 6 started, the, the first section was about the founding of the church. And chapter 6 goes all the way back to Genesis 12 and God's covenant with Abram. And that covenant starts with God speaking to Abram. And God says, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. And then at the end of verse 3, we read, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And that, that, in many ways, is the covenant that we have. God blesses us so that all the peoples of the world will receive God's blessing through us. And, and that's, in many ways, you know, Jesus is God's continuation of the covenant that God made with Abram. And God, the, the whole Bible, we, when we covered the, the Bible through the story last year, one of the things we heard in many, many times was that, that the Bible is God seeking to restore the relationship that was lost with sin. When Adam and Eve sinned, and when we sin, our relationship with God is lost. And Scripture tells us over and over and over that God wants that relationship restored. You know, one of the things that, that, that uh, troubles me greatly, and I don't really know what to do. I've been trying to work of a pithy response about it, and that is that, that people will go and have a good experience. They'll have a good experience like at a bar, or they'll have a good experience at a concert, or at a musical, or at a play, or at a movie, and they'll say something, and I'll, I'll see it in interviews and things where they'll say, well, it was, it was as good as going to church. It was better than going to church. And I just cringe inside. Because somehow we, we, we equate, it seems in our, in our society, we equate having a very positive, uplifting experience to church. But so few come to church for that experience. You know, hopefully when we come to church, we experience Something spiritual, joyful, fulfilling. And, and, and I'm not exactly sure why that we, we, there's, a, there's a gap between, between what we think might happen here and what happens here. I think a big part of maybe why that doesn't happen is, 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 is our selfishness. So, so many times we get wrapped up and, well, I think the church ought to be this, or I think the church ought to be that. And, and then sometimes we'll take it one step further. It's like, well, here's how I want my church to be. You know, my church should have this. My church should have that. And we lose track that it's not our church. The church belongs to Jesus Christ. And we come here not to worship ourselves, not to worship each other, not to worship our, our property or our buildings. We come here to worship God. God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are the audience. We are the one. Who are the participants seeking to give God honor and glory and thanksgiving? God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are the audience. And, and I've shared this before, but I believe that our worship happens all the time. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. I think God, our, our, I think God's expectation, and I, what I hope I do, is that every moment of my life, I'm worshiping God. I think that a statement could be made that every moment of our life we're worshiping something. Well, hopefully, every moment of our life, our focus, our worship is on God. You know, we, we looked at the verses that we read from Ephesians 4 
you know, where, where Paul says, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. I think all of us are called. I think there's something that God has for each one of us to do. And then verse 2 talks about being completely humble, gentle, patient, bearing one another in love. What a great verse. What great attributes for us to keep in mind as we live our lives. Would that we could live a life where all of our interactions are done with humility, with gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love. And in verse 3, make every effort to experience or to, to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. And uh, then it goes on to talk about how there's one body, one Spirit, one hope, where we were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father who is over all, through all, and in all. And, and, and it, 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 it talks there about how the church is the body of Christ. And in 1 Corinthians 12, we get, it, we get more about that uh, image of the church being the body of Christ. And I'm going to pick up in 1 Corinthians 12, 12 where, where the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all of its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. We are our baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free. We were all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is made up of one part, but many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, cease to be a part of the body. And, and, and sometimes I think about this when I'm struggling with different people in the church. You know, you think somebody, well, somebody's being causing trouble or somebody's giving issues or you don't. You know, and, and I think about this first. It's like, well, you know, what if, what if we could just say, well, well, there, that's not going to be a part of the body anymore. But we can't, we can't do that. We can't do that. You know, and sometimes when I get extremely frustrated, um, it, it doesn't always help, but I, I think about the Apostle Paul. You know, I think about, here's a guy who was executing Christians who becomes one of the key leaders of the church. And, and so anybody that we're thinking, well, maybe we should try to get them out, maybe, maybe that's the person that God intends to use in a big way. And, and if we're not careful, we'll close the door to that. And so how important it is to us, for us to have, to have that humility. That gentleness, that patience, the willingness to bear one another in love, which which is, is bound to include uh, bound to include forgiveness, forgiveness. What verse was I on? I don't even remember. That's fifteen up there. I'm gonna pick up at sixteen. And if the ear should say, "Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body," it would be. It would not, for that reason, cease to be a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as God wanted them to be. If they were not all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. The head cannot say to the feet, I do not need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. The parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are represented or treated with special modesty... While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has combined the members of the body, has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it. So there should be no division in the body, but that is, parts should have equal concern each for other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. 
If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ. Each one of you is a part of it. Our, our, uh, the, the value, I think, that God gives to the church comes from this, this image of the body and how all together as we faithfully work to accomplish God's purpose, because we are together and working together, I think that we are able to do abundantly more than we would be able to do individually. As we, as we read the story in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2 about, about the beginning of the church at Pentecost, and, and, and we see there that from Acts chapter 1 to the end of Acts chapter 2, the church goes from roughly a, a little over 100 people to over 3,000 people all in that day because of, because of the work of the Holy Spirit and, and how God is able to change hearts of those who were able to hear the message because of what the disciples were able to do because of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read uh, chapter 2, verse 4 and verse 6. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And then when the people heard this sound and the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And I think that's what the work of the Holy Spirit does today is this, as we find ourselves in need of a message from God, somehow God works so that we hear it and we understand it in a way that we need to so that we can know what God has for us. So we can know about the relationship that we can have with God because of Jesus Christ. Or maybe we can know the next step in our, in our walk, the next thing that God wants us to do. Or maybe we can have a better understanding of the gifts that we have, the calling that God places on our life. What we know as we, as we follow the, the early days of the church in chapter 6 is that the church faced persecution. And it was through that persecution that the church spread all over Asia and towards Europe. And they're in the Middle East and towards Africa. Because, because of the persecution, different leaders in the church dispersed. And they took the message of Jesus Christ with them. Oh, that when we disperse and we go about our work during the week, that we too take the message of Jesus Christ with us. That we have those faith conversations with others that we, that we talk about. You know, uh, you know, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. You know, our task is to help bring the kingdom of heaven everywhere. I think the kingdom of heaven is not something that's going to happen someday. I think the kingdom of heaven is here and now as we as God's people live out the life that God wants us to live. The mission of the church is making disciples. The mission of the church is, is getting the message of God, the good news of God's love and God's desire of a relationship to people. The church, the, the, main, the main part of the church is people, and the main focus of the, of the church is people, people, and more people. Sometimes when I'm not exactly sure what uh, what I need to be thinking about or what I need to be doing. I, I go over to Matthew 25 and there's a there's a parable there, there that Jesus told about the sheep and the goats and the judgment of, of the nations. And, and I'm going to pick up verse 25, verse 34, where Jesus says, Then the king will say to those that at his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Indeed, I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or need clothing and clothe you? When did we see you sick? Or in prison and go to visit you. The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. I was at a presentation about three months ago, maybe two months ago, I can't remember now, everything's running together. 
but it was a presentation about what the church is going through right now and someone got up to speak at this and and they, and they made a very impassioned plea that we each one of us should consider ourselves as a local franchise to the kingdom of God that we're open and ready for business, that we are a local franchise to the kingdom of God. And that's how we should look at ourselves and our lives. And, and he made the same point. He says, in, in churches, by extension, churches are local franchises to the kingdom of God. So that, so that, so that as we interact with one another, as, as people maybe outside of the church interact with our church and with us, hopefully what they experience is an encounter with the kingdom of God as, as we uh, as we love one another I'm going to just reread today's text because I think it's so important for the way we order our lives and we live in the way in the way uh, where, where uh, this is Ephesians 4 1 through 6 as a prisoner for the Lord I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received be completely humble and gentle be patient Bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, through all, and in all. You know, as God's people, I think what God wants us to do is to love everyone. I think God wants us to love folks with blue eyes, with brown eyes, with green eyes, even hazel eyes. We are to love everyone. That's a part of what God wants us to do. There's a great, there's a great box that's at the end of each chapter that talks about what we believe. And uh, for chapter 6, it's on page 109. And, and God uses both uh, Israel and the church to accomplish God's grand plan to redeem and to restore us to a right relationship with him God's plan is to bring us back to Jesus who provides the only way back to God so our, my hope is that we will be people with humility people with gentleness people with patience People who bear one another with love. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you <clears throat> for the relationship that's possible with you through Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord God, in everything to follow Christ faithfully. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are receiving our offering at, uh, there's a plate there on the back table. We invite you to leave an offering in the plate. If you would mail an offering to our church, the address is Post Office Box 14, Flynn, Texas, 77855. I invite the congregation to stand and let's join together in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Before we sing our uh, hymn of commitment, uh, Julie uh, Rufino has expressed uh, she, she wants to join our church. And so I just wanted to, to go through our membership vows with Julie. And, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll do that just now. Julie, we ask you, will you support uh, this church with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness? And all of us, we, we renew our commitment to support our church with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. Our hymn of commitment is uh, more precious than silver. Here we go. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, Not 
Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you the gift of his peace. We ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel, guide up all you. With the sheep. God be with you till we meet. Blessings. Y'all have a great week.